Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Claudia Monticelli, also known as Christelle Montanet, your guide into the world of the extraordinary. Today we're going to explore a topic that's very, very close to my heart and deeply fascinating, mediumship. And I'm doing this for beginners who want to get their wet their feet wet because I've been asked over and over I want to do what you want to do and how do you why can I do that how can I do that um well let's take step by step this is an uh, old picture this is an old picture of a seance a medium with a seance mediumship is an ancient practice it's a bridge between worlds, a way of communicating with spirits who have passed on. It's a practice that's steeped, in, steeped really profoundly in his, history, in mystery. And it's quite intriguing. There is a lot of intrigue around the work of a medium. Um, but, but before we dive in, if you're new here, welcome. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Ding! So you never miss any of our explorations into the extraordinary. And if you're already part of our community, welcome back. It's great to have you here. So are you ready to delve into the world of mediumship to understand what it means to communicate with the other side? Let's embark on this journey together. You'll see that oftentimes when we talk about mediums, look at the hands in the pictures I show you. They are quite important. So what exactly is mediumship? According to Wikipedia, mediumship is the practice of mediating communication between spirits of the dead and the living human beings. This means that mediums act as a bridge between our physical world and the spiritual realm, independently from any relation of religion that you may have or that you may be linked to in any way. This picture is the picture of a shaman. Where does this practice come from, mediumship? And why has it held such a significant place in cultures around the world? To understand this, we need to delve into the history and cultural significance of mediumship. Remember I said, look at the hands. This is a stylized picture, of course. But if you look, you'll see the hands are always placed. I don't want to stay, say strategically, but they have a meaning. I myself, when I work as a medium, I'm always constantly moving my hands. Sometimes you may watch me on the video, but you don't see what I'm doing with my hands. I'm always there rushing back and forth and back and forth, and I'm waving them in the air, uh, moving air and moving spiritual matter about. Now, we um, have to say that mediumships, mediumship has roots in various cultures, as I mentioned, um, and we just saw the shaman picture from the ancient shamans who communicated with spirits for guidance and healing, to the Victorian era spiritualists who looked for uh, to make contact with those who have departed, mediumship has always been a part of our history. The, in the 19th century, spiritualism developed into a popular alternative spirituality in Britain, in both Britain and the United States. And this movement was based on the belief that those who have departed, departed souls, souls that have passed, can interact with the living. And it saw mediums playing a crucial role in society. 
Now, the modern representation of a medium at work might look something like this. Here, if I scroll up, you can see, now we'll be able to see the hands in this picture, but definitely there is a piece of jewelry. Today, mediums and light workers alike use crystals much more uh, than in the past. Now, there is, um, to, we have to say that today mediumship continues to evolve, of course, with mediums using their abilities in so many different ways. For example, they provide comfort to those who are grieving, who grieve a loss, and um, they offer also insights and messages of guidance from the spiritual realm, from people's spirit guides, for example. But there is quite a lump, a lot of intrigue. Mediumship may be met with skepticism. Some people may be skeptic about mediumship. Okay? It, it, mediumship gets a bad rap, I always say. And uh, they're always being tested. We are always being tested. But while mediumship and mediums may be met with skepticism by some, the experiences, now this is where the truth in inverted comma, commas lies, the experiences of countless individuals throughout history and across the cultures cannot easily be dismissed. The enduring presence of mediumship, mediumship in our societies speaks to a deep, inherent curiosity about what lies beyond the veil of the physical world. But now let's delve into how mediumship works. How do mediums communicate with the other side? This process involves a complex interplay of energy, intuition, and psychic abilities. Most mediums enter a state of heightened awareness or a trance-like state during a reading. And in this state, they open themselves up to receive messages from spirits. According to Wikipedia, during this communication period, a spirit uses the medium's mind to communicate. Now, there are different ways, as I just have said, for mediums to work. They can use a heightened awareness state or trance-like state. And there are different ways, therefore, that people work, mediums work. And when mediums go into a deepened trance, it's very likely the voice changes when the messages come through. Undoubtedly, they have to enter a state of heightened awareness. Otherwise, they will not be able to hear, see, feel spirits and their messages. Now, mediums perceive information from spirits in various ways. Some mediums see visions or hear messages, while others might just know things intuitively. Um, they then convey these messages to those in the physical world. But it's not just about intuition and psychic abilities, psychic abilities. No, it's not, because energy plays a big role, undoubtedly. The most important role, I would say. Mediums often speak about sensing or working with the energy of the person or spirit they're communicating with. And we'll be showing you a um, five-step approach for you to get started in this work. But let's move on now and mention 
a bit about experimentation, the science behind mediumship. So if we want to talk about science, obviously that's another realm compared to mediumship. But here I'm talking about how science wanted to measure, to understand, to put mediumship to the test. And although mediumship is a spiritual practice, some scientific studies have been conducted on it and not just a few. For instance, research was conducted by the University of Virginia and it involved mediums providing readings about deceased persons to a proxy sitter. And the real sitters then blindly rated the accuracy of the readings. Now, what is a proxy sitter? A proxy sitter is an individual who acts as a substitute or a stand-in or who stands in for the actual client. The sitter is a client who stands in for the actual client during a communication session with a medium. The sitter or client is typically someone who wants to connect with a deceased loved one or receive messages for, from the spirit world. Now the proxy sitters, the proxy clients role is to provide information and feedback to the medium while maintaining objectivity and minimizing any prior knowledge or personal communication or personal connection to the deceased person. And by doing this, the proxy sitter, the proxy client, helps ensure that the information received by the medium is not influenced or biased by their own experiences or expectations. Proxy sitters are often used in scientific research studies on mediumship to assess the accuracy, to measure the validity of the medium's communication. They're carefully selected individuals who have little or no prior knowledge about the deceased person being contacted. And this helps to reduce the likelihood of unintentional information leakage. The real sitters, the real clients who were expecting to receive readings about their deceased loved ones, then assessed, they evaluated the accuracy of the information provided by the mediums. This allowed the researchers to evaluate the effectiveness of mediumship and determine whether the information relayed by the mediums matched the real sitter's expectations or contained previously unknown details. The experiment employed a what is called a triple blind protocol. This means that the mediums, the proxy sitters and the real sitters were all unaware of the information being communicated. This helped ensure the integrity of the study and helped to ensure minimizing potential biases from both the mediums and the sitters. Overall, the University of Virginia's research aimed to contribute to the understanding of mediumship and tried to provide, provide insights into the accuracy and legitimacy of information conveyed by mediums about deceased individuals. These kinds of studies helped to shed light on the intricacies of mediumship. And many of you may already have heard of these types of research projects. However, it's important to remember that the experience of mediumship can be highly personal and highly subjective. It varies from medium to medium and from spirit to spirit. spirit. And here I will insert my personal experience with mediumship, for example. I am a medium who has a high rate of heightened awareness and it is at the drop of a dime. 
I do not enter trance. I do not need to enter trance because when I do enter trance state, I faint. And this has happened over the years. And I've had to work on the way I received messages because if I ever do enter trance states, I lose consciousness. Okay. So I had to hone my skills and enter the heightened state of awareness very, very quickly and remove myself from that state. Now, there are a number of um, stories that I can tell you about in my journey exploring mediumship. I've had some truly unforgettable experiences. And each interaction with the spiritual realm is really unique, as I mentioned, and deeply and profoundly personal. And it always offers insights and messages that often resonate profoundly. I remember uh, one instance when I was communicating with the spirit of a woman named Margaret. She shared memories of her time spent in a garden, her love for roses, her regret for not having spent more time with her family. And the person I was doing the reading for was taken aback. Margaret was his grandmother, and he had found, he had very uh, remembered memories that he had, fond memories of her tending to her rose garden. Another incident, there was another time when I felt a strong presence around a client. The spirit was persistent and kept showing me images of a silver locket. When I mentioned this to my client, she broke down in tears. It turned out that the locket belonged to her mother who had passed away recently and it was the last memento she had of her. It's these experience, experiences like these and many others have shown me the power and the depth of mediumship. It's not just about communicating with spirits, but also about healing, very, very important, about healing, overcoming grief, living through grief, understanding and connecting at a deeper, deeper level. Now we're going into specific guidance for beginners who want to get their feet wet with mediumship. Um, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step process, or we could call them bullet points, but I, I will not put them in a bullet point form. Um, and if you're intrigued, of course, by mediumship and want to explore it further, there are several steps you can take. And here are some tips based on my personal experience and my own research. The first thing to do is to educate yourself. This is something that only you can do. Only you can do. And how can I educate myself, you are asking. These are covers of two books, um, read widely. They're very widely read on the topic of mediumship. There are many resources in, in truth available that provide insight into the world of mediumships. Books such as You Are a Medium by Sherry Dillard and Mediumship, A Masterful Guide for the Practicing Medium can be good starting points. So come, go back and re-watch the video and take note of these. Now, secondly, the second bullet point, practice mindfulness and meditation. This is a very personal experience. As I mentioned to you, I uh, reach a high state of awareness, a heightened state of awareness at the drop of a dime, at the drop of a hat. And I practiced this over the years because when I entered a trance state, I would lose consciousness and I worked against me. Now, let's just start with this idea, mindfulness and meditation. Um, mindfulness is just being aware, 
being aware of what you're doing, talking to yourself, looking at yourself. Now I'm getting the bowl. I'm putting cereal in the bowl. I'm going to put milk in the cereal. And I'm now sitting to eat my breakfast. Things like this, breathing while you're being mindful and meditation. Here too, meditative practice are, practices are very personal. Um, and the ideas of surrounding meditation are very, very varied and colorful. I would say colorful in this. I chose this picture because it, because it made me laugh. Um, just taking a lunch break and, and meditating. These practices can help you tune into your intuitive state, into your intuition, and open up to spiritual energies. They also provide a very solid foundation for any kind of psychic work. You have to be patient with yourself. Remember that. I'm going to say that again. You have to be patient with yourself. People say to me, I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything. I don't see anything. I don't feel anything. It takes time. It takes time. Now, third practice, the third practice, trust your intuition. Trust your intuition. Mediumship is all about tapping into your own intuitive abilities, as I said. Don't dismiss your feelings or your hunches, your gut. They could be your first steps toward communicating with the spiritual realm. And another important idea, not for many, not for all, but you may want to find a mentor or join a development circle. You can consider this, and this can provide guidance, it can provide support and a safe place, a safe haven to, to practice. Because once you start with this type of activity, you're going to get a lot of eyebrows raised, a lot of people thinking you're nuts. Um, we're, here she goes off the deep end. He's losing his mind. You know, the... the <laughs> the, the things people have said to my face, behind my back. And it's funny how then time passes and they come back to me and ask me, listen, I have to do this. I know that you're sensitive, they say. What do you think? You know, I thought, I, I scratch my head and I say, you know, it's odd that you're asking me what happened and what do you, have you, and so I make them talk. And finally, I realize that uh, people at some time in their life, they find that not all black on white responses and answers satisfies them. And they try to get their answers elsewhere. So when you are um, looking for a support group, it may look something like this, uh, not with a, a, a shaman-like representation or a trance-like state. These are people who talk about their experiences and give you pointers on how to either live with other people who don't believe that you have certain abilities or don't even believe that it's possible to speak to spirits. And I assure you, I assure you, there are more spirits that have passed in my house, on the streets, in this world, than there are humans. Any medium will tell you that. There is a very important thing to remember here. It's all about protecting yourself energetically. You have to remember to protect yourself. You have to set clear boundaries with the spirits you communicate with and always close the connections once you are done. And 
all of us, me included. Yep, me included, I forget. Lots of us forget to close the communication, the connection with the spirit world once we're done. Now, exploring mediumship can be an exciting and deeply rewarding journey. But like any journey, it's important to prepare and proceed with respect, R-E-S-P-C-T, respect and caution. So if you feel drawn to this path, I encourage you to embrace the journey, stay open and enjoy that process. Enjoy it. Edith Wharton once beautifully said, there are two ways of spreading light. You can be the candle or the mirror that reflects it, reflects it as you embark on this spiritual journey of mediumship. Remember that you can be a beacon of light, guiding spirits and providing comfort and understanding to those left behind. This quote reminds us that we all possess the power to spread light in our own unique way. And I mean all of us. Yes, you who are listening. Whether we choose to be the candle or the mirror that reflects it, our actions have the potential to inspire others, to uplift others and ignite positive change in the world, one step at a time, one person at a time. So, To sum up, to wrap things up, we've explored the intriguing world of mediumship. We delved into its history and cultural significance, understanding how it works. And we've heard some personal experiences and offered some guidance for beginners interested in this path. And in concluding this brief foray into mediumship for beginners, remember that mediumship is about more about just communicating with spirits. It's about healing. It's understanding. It's about connecting on a deeper level. It's a journey that requires openness, again, respect, R-E-S-P-C-T, (laughs) P-E-C-T, and a willingness to explore the unknown. We need to be open and willing to explore the unknown. I hope this video has given you a new perspective on mediumship and maybe even sparked your curiosity. If you have any experiences or thoughts you might like to share, please do that. Do that in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. Do share your ideas and thoughts and experiences. And if you found this video helpful or interesting, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, and subscribe to the channel. We'll be exploring more fascinating topics in future videos, and we'd love for you to join us. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, keep exploring, stay curious, and embrace the journey.